Yeah, good, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you again. Uh, so last time we defined Lie algebra. So Lie algebra, uh, Lie algebra is the finite oh, complex work real. It's a finite dimensional. Actually, we will later consider infinite dimensional, but anyway. For now, vector space denoted as G uh, with bracket, uh, so kind of multiplication, um, satisfying the Jacobi okay. bracket, or which is um, bilinear, bilinear, skew symmetric. And uh, Jacobi, which satisfies Jacobi identity, which is like this. For all x, y, z in the vector space G. Okay, and we saw one example. So, G L N C is as a set, uh, set of all matrices. So, as a set, this is really the same as a set of all n by n matrices. But the Lie bracket is defined by definition is defined to be uh, x, y, minus y, x. Because x and y are square matrices, we can multiply them in as matrices. And then this is just x, y, minus y, x. Okay. Um, okay. Now we will continue in this direction. So, let's say g is a real or complex or complex Lie algebra. So from now on, if I just write this Gothic G, it will just mean real or complex algebra, okay? Lie algebra, okay? So definition, <coughs> a sub-algebra of G uh, is a, a subspace. <coughs> Subspace is a vector space, so I'm gonna denote write this as H again. So Gothic H subspace of G such that <coughs> H1, H2 is inside uh, element of H for all H1 and H2 in H. In other words, the subalgebra means a subspace, which is also a Lie algebra under the same definition. It's like a subgroup or subring, things like that. So it's a subspace having the same um, Lie, with the same Lie bracket, uh, we obtain a Lie algebra. <coughs> okay. Uh, And if G is real, is uh, G is a complex Lie algebra, and H is a real subspace, of G uh, closed under, like this, this means it's closed under the bracket, right? So let me star with star, star condition. Then we say that H is a real uh, subalgebra of G. There's a slight. Uh, Slightly stronger <coughs> condition than this, I think. Okay, I want to. Yeah, I don't think 
I have to keep. Okay. There is a more mm, <coughs> there is a definition similar to this, but more strong uh, stronger than this stronger than this star condition, which is uh, so an idea of G. Again, if I write G like this, then it's a real algebra. An ideal of G is, is a sub-algebra H of G. A sub-algebra means subspace and uh, with that condition uh, such that now, now we have like H and say G. Okay, so let's write this way. It's more common to write X is in H for all X in G for all H in H. This is stronger. <coughs> so sub algebra for a sub condition for the sub algebra we have like H one, H two, both in H, but now X can be any element in G. So it's uh, stronger. So sub algebra uh, ideal is a sub algebra, but the converse may not be true. And the center, center of G is denoted Z of G. And this is the set of all elements uh, commutes with all elements in, in the real algebra. So this means X, Y commute. We say that in this case, X and Y commute for all Y in G. It's like the usual definition of a center of an algebra or a group. <coughs> okay. So now we define now we define real algebras. So the natural definition is homomorphism among real algebras. So let's say G and H these are real algebras. And a Lie algebra homomorphism, algebra homomorphism from G to H. We want to talk about this, G to H. So usually when you say homomorphism, it means a map that preserves a structure. So we are talking about Lie algebra homomorphism, so it's a map between Lie algebras preserving Lie algebra structure. So the Lie algebra is a vector space, first of all. So it's a linear map. So homomorphism of between vector spaces is a linear map. So first of all, it must be a linear map, say uh, phi from G to H. Okay. So as vector spaces, as a map between vector spaces, it must be a linear map uh, such that but we also want to preserve, want this to preserve the structure of the Lie, uh, Lie bracket. So phi of x comma y equals phi of x phi of y for all x and y in G. That's the definition of Lie algebra homomorphism. <coughs> Because both G and H are Lie algebras, we have Lie bracket here and Lie bracket here. But they are different because the spaces are different, or the maps are different. So this bracket is a bracket in in G, right? But this one, on the other hand, is a bracket in H. But we will just write the uh, same using the same notation because. Uh, the meaning is clear. This has to be uh, the Lie bracket in G. This has to be the Lie bracket in H. So there is no confusion. So we will just write this way. And like we do for the usual homomorphism, if phi is uh, one to one, one to one and on two, one to one and on two, like a 
bijective, then V is called a Lie algebra isomorphism. Morphism. So the Lie algebra isomorphism means uh, vector space isomorphism preserving the Lie bracket. And in this case, and in this case, so if it, this means if there is if phi is a one to one on two, we say that if there is a one to one on two Lie or Lie al algebra isomorphism, we say that G and H are isomorphic, and write uh, the usual way like H. G isomorphic to H. Okay, uh, I think everything is clear now. So let's move on. <coughs> uh, there is a special uh, Lie algebra homomorphism. This will be used very often. So again, G, if I just write G is a Lie algebra, and let's say X is an uh, element in G. It's a fixed element, say. And uh, we can define the adjoint map, adjoint map, denoted uh, add uh, sub X, so it's defined <coughs> once x is fixed. For each x, we define a joint map in this way. There is a map from G to G uh, is defined by the map is quite simple. So because it's a map, once we have y, we must get some element in G. But that's just defined by definition. This is just definition. It's just defined like that. So once, whenever we have y, we have we have this Lie bracket, so it's defined, so it's an element in G, so you will send x to, I'm oh, sorry, y to some element. That's the definition of the adjoint map. Uh, this is a, by definition, is it should be a linear map, vector space one-to-one -one map. So this is for sure a linear map, but is this a Lie algebra homomorphism? And the answer is yes. So, and okay, so it's clear. Let's, let's say clear. And moreover, this is this preserves uh, the this. In other words, so this means uh, Lie, uh, Lie algebra homomorphism. What does that mean? This preserve this, this means this is a map. Whenever we have y comma z, so we can put it this inside. So a d x y a d x z. This is what I mean by this sentence. This map preserves the V bracket. But why? Why is this true? Because, you know, just to use the definition. So what, this is equivalent to saying that x comma, so we want to check whether this is equal to uh, x comma y, x comma z. Okay? Oh, sorry. Yeah, there is one thing that I have to mention, I think. Oh, no, 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 this is not. This 
Is this what I wanted to say? Let's see. Uh, I think I have to say something. Dif I wanted to say something different. Okay, let's let's forget about this for the moment. Uh, sorry about that. Let's let's erase this. I wanted to say something else. All right. So now, x when, once x is defined, we have the map. But now we consider something else, uh, like this. So add is a map from G to say endomorphism of G, because once we have once we fix x here, we can find add sub x. So this is a map. So add x is a map from G to G, right? But this means add is an endomorphism of G. But now this becomes a Lie algebra. This is a vector space. End of G. So, okay. Is a Lie algebra homomorphism? Homomorphism? Because add x So now we have to define uh Okay, let me just write I feel like I'm a little confused. Oh, sorry, sorry. I think I'm uh, completely confused. This is a Lie algebra homomorphism, and this is equivalent to this. This is an equivalent to a uh, Jacobi identity. Okay. Sorry about that. So y Z Y Z. And in fact, this is equivalent to this, and this is equivalent to saying that it, uh, X is a derivation. So let me define this. So a definition or uh, an operator, say delta, is a derivative if delta a dot b equals uh, delta a a delta b. So this is defined on an algebra with some uh, multiplication. And this, a common example of this is the DDX operator. So DDX, when you have a function or a polynomial in X, this operator satisfies this. This is usually called the Leib Leibniz operator. FG, if we have this, DDX times G plus F D, D, X, G. Okay. Yeah, so this is, this is non-trivial, but this can be done. This, uh, this part is done. This, this part uh, can be proved, which uh, see the textbook. So it turns out that add is indeed a Lie algebra uh, homomorphism, and it can be proved that 
uh, using the Jacobi identity. Ah, uh, 제가 그걸 정리를 해야 될것 같습니다. 네. That's a good question. So the question is, what is the Li bracket here? In fact, okay. So n g is a set of. Okay, how can I say? Let's say set of. Uh, so G is a vector space, right? Vector space. So we can think of this as the set of all linear transformations. So it's a all trans linear transformation. So one, or once you fix that uh, basis element, can be thought of as the matrix, set of matrices. So in this case, x comma y is defined to be x y minus y x. So it's a, this is a composition. We can compose two linear transformations in this way. So it's like that. So in fact, if uh, g uh, is of dimension, say, n, n, then in fact, end of G is basically the same as G, L, N, C. Okay, the uh, complex, if it's complex vector space. So here I define this to be the set of matrices, N by N matrices, where the Lie bracket is defined exactly like that. So it's basically the same thing. Any other questions? Okay. Um, yeah, by the way, yeah, I think I have to mention this, but proposition, this is a proposition, you can be, can be shown that, so, okay, let's define this way. V is a vector space. This can be defined for any vector space, so end of, end of V is a set of all linear transformations, say, the same way, linear transformation. And f comma g is defined exactly in this way, f compose g, g compose f. Then uh, this becomes a Lie algebra. And in fact, this is really the same as, if this is complex vector space, then this is really the same thing. And for end of G, we will just think of this as a vector space and then give the Lie algebra structure like that. algebra, then uh, which is exactly uh, add x minus, I'm oh, sorry, add x comma, add x, add y. In other words, uh, yeah, this is actually what I said, right? In other words, add uh, is a Lie, Al Lie algebra homomorphism. <coughs> 
So, by, by the way, this is the definition, right? This is the definition I just showed you. So we need to show this, but this can be proved. This is in fact the same as uh, the same as the Jacobi identity. So we need to show this. We want to show this for every uh, element z in G. Is this true? We, is this true? But what? Let's rewrite this x, y, z. But now this is what this is a composition. So x and y comma z minus y comma x comma z. So this is just a, another way of writing the Jacobi identity. This is Jacobi identity. OK? Now let's look at another definition. So now we have two uh, real algebras, the direct sum of uh, G1 and G2 is, as a, ve as a vector space, this is just uh, the vector space. G1 direct sum G2. So we can, when we have two vector spaces, we can define the direct sum. But we have to define uh, with bracket defined in this way. So if you write one element, element here as a pair, x1 comma say x2, y1 comma y2, this is just defined to be equal to x1 comma. So we, we just con compute the Lie bracket of the first part and then make it the first component and then compute the Lie bracket between the second part and then say that that's the second component of the result. This is the definition. Then, of course, we have to check that this is a Lie, this becomes a Lie algebra, but that's uh, easy. Direct sum. So now let's consider, um, what's that? Um, <coughs> in this situation, um, I think I can, I have to go to the next page. Let's say if G is G1 uh, bracket, I'm uh, sorry, direct sum G2, and then for like X1, oh sorry, X is X1, consider two elements, X in G1, Y in G2. This is not exactly an, an element here, but we can think of this as, identify this as an element here, like this. Then consider, then we can, or maybe we can consider X, I'm just using the same notation, because we, I want to identify X with element. We can just embed G1 inside this direct sum. In the usual way, this is in G, right? And Y, 0 comma Y is in G. So something comma 0 and 0 comma something. Let's see what happens if we, um, in this case, what happens? What is this? By definition, this is x comma zero, uh, zero comma y. But the, the direct sum, uh, the Lie bracket of the direct sum is defined just uh, 
component wise. So x comma zero, zero comma y. But we know that this is just zero comma zero, or it's just zero. You know. <coughs> so for all x y, we have this. Okay. If this is a Dirac sum. Now let's consider this. Suppose, let's suppose that G, G1 and G2, these are sub-algebra of G. We have sub-algebras of G. And such that G is a Dirac sum of them. But we don't know that this is just uh, as vector space. We don't know yet whether they are, this is really a direct sum of Lie algebras. And suppose, uh, suppose I, maybe I suppose too much, but uh, x comma y equals zero for all x in G1 and y in G2, for all y in G2. Then we say that, in this case, we say that uh, G decomposes into, uh, decomposes as Lie algebra, as a Lie algebra, uh, direct sum of G1 and G2. In this case. Okay. But, but this is basically the same as before. Mm. So if G is a G is G1 direct sum G2, these are subalgebras of G. And if this is true for all x and y, this is really the isomorphic to the direct sum in this way. And in this case, we say that G decomposes into a direct sum. And one of the main problems in Lie algebra. Uh, is to decompose a given Lie algebra into irreducible ones. So in that way, Dirac sum will be uh, used. So when, it, when we have this Dirac sum, then the situation is easy. Once we understand G1 and G2, understanding G is not that difficult because they, they, got, they, they can be computed separately. You can just if you know everything here and everything here, just uh, com computing the Lie, Lie bracket is just compute, computing co component-wise, so it's going to be not difficult. That's why we want to understand uh, the smaller pieces, because we know if we know this, we can understand the bigger piece. Okay, so that's for chap section 3.1. and. We're going to move on to the next section. Section 3.2 is about simple, uh, solvable, and nilpotent Lie algebra. So these are some properties for Lie algebra. Um, I just mentioned that we are going to decompose G into irreducible ones, but I really haven't defined yet what irreducible means. So uh, Lie algebra G, we say that this is irreducible if uh, G and zero are the only uh, ideas of so it does not have any non-trivial or any proper ideas except these trivial ones. So by the way, these are yeah, easily seen to be ideals. But if these are the only ideals, then we say this is irreducible. And this definition is interesting. And G is simple. Is irreducible, simple. If 
it is irreducible and dimension is greater than or equal to 2. Now, this definition is a little strange, but that's the way it is. Irreducible, but we don't want to say that dimension 1 uh, real algebra is simple. We don't want to say that. So just assume this is by definition. Okay, let's see what happens if dimension equals 1. So note that if dimension is 1, is this irreducible? And answer is yes. Then this is always irreducible. But of course, by definition, it's, it's not simple. G is irreducible. Why? Because 0 and G are the only ideals of G. Ideal is, must be a subspace, first of all. And there is only one, these are the only possible subspaces of G if dimension is 1. Yeah. So that's it. That's the explanation for this. And in this case, dimension 1 case, I mean, G is irreducible and at the same time G is commutative. Commutative means x comma y equals 0 for all x and y g. Why is this true? Why is this commutative? Because it's dimension 1, we can find the basis element. Just one, we have only one basis element, say x, because if let x be a non-zero element in g, then this forms a basis, a single element. Then uh, for all, say, y, y, z, and g, of course, y equals c, x, z equals d, x, for some scalar c and d, then, of course, y, comma, z is c, x, d, x, but by linearity, c, d, x, comma, y, but comma x. But x comma x by its skew symmetric is always zero. So dimension one, if the dimension is one, it's always commutative. Mm, conversely, or is that really converse? Let's consider uh, G commutative. Then what happens? Then every subspace, say H of G, is an ideal. So ideal means the subspace, which is which is an ideal in the usual sense for the uh, ring for a ring, like H. Uh, I think I wrote x, but yeah, it doesn't matter. It's commute with this minus sign. So we want to know whether this is equal to, uh, this is in h for all h in h, x in uh, g. Is this true? Yes, because, you know, commutative means this is 0 always. It's always 0, so it's there. So if it's a subspace, this condition is trivial. It's always true. So it's going to be just an ideal. So, so commutative case, ideals are exactly the same as subspaces. So, so if dimension g is greater than or equal to 2, and it's, if it, it's commutative, then G is not irreducible, right? Because dimension is 2, you can always find the subspace which is not 0 or the itself. Okay? 
then it's going to be an ideal because it's commutative, so it's not irreducible. So, so commutative and irreducible means what? Suppose that G is commutative and also at the same time irreducible, then what can you say about G? Dimension is 1. Dimension must be 1. Because if dimension is greater than or equal to 2, it cannot be irreducible. So another way of saying a simple real algebra is the following. So is simple means simple means G is non non commutative and irreducible. Irreducible but not commutative. So somehow we don't want to consider commutative case. It's uh, too simple. Um, maybe that's not a bit <laughs> good way to say that. We want to say, I don't know, yeah. We want, to, we want, want it to be simple, but not too simple. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. All right. Um, so just remember, just remember just this definition. Yeah, That's irreducible, but dimension greater than or equal to two. Okay, um, example, SL2C, this is simple. This is a simple D algebra. Uh, let's see briefly why this is simple. So, so oh, by the way, I don't think I define this. I think I should define this first. Definition. S, L, and C. This is this. Okay. Let's say G, L. The sub, sub algebra of G, L, and C whose trace, the set of uh, matrices whose traces is zero. Trace zero matrices. And this becomes a real algebra, then, then we can check that this is a sub-algebra of uh, G, L, N, C. So certainly it's a subspace. But to show that it's a sub-algebra, we have to show that it is closed under this G bra Lee bracket. But you can check that easily. Check. Anyway, this is uh, this is called a special linear algebra. So yeah, we will see this very often. <coughs> this is an important example of Lie algebra. Okay, so now let's go back to this example. So let's prove this. So as I said, as I said, this is set of uh, set of. Oh, let's not write x. Uh, maybe z. M n. M two. So two by two matrices. Oh, okay. I think it's better. So it's like a b c d where. A plus D trace is zero, right? As I said, uh, instead of two by two matrices like that, but the Lie bracket is of, of course defined like this because the sub algebra of the general linear algebra. So define the Lie algebra. Lie bracket is defined like that. So let's take a uh, basis of this element, this uh, Lie algebra. So this is a common way of taking the real basis. Y equals 
0010 uh, not Z H 100 minus 1 we will use this notation very often so yeah. Yeah, it's, you, you need to remember this basis we will see this we will use uh, this real algebra very often and for SL3 and SL SLN anyway this is a basis it's easy right to see they all uh, elements in this and the dimension is here three so we have found all the basis elements so this is a standard basis for SL2 and let's compute uh, the Lie bracket we know the definition so it's just a matter of time to compute this it's going to be uh, H H X and yeah, hopefully Sooner or later, you will remember this. You will remember all of this because we will use this very often. Uh, so to show that this is simple, we want we need to show that zero and g, g is g, this are the only ideal. So let's let H be an ideal of SL two. And if, if you can conclude that H is zero or the whole set, then we are done. Okay. And of course, we can we may assume that H is non-zero. And our conclusion will be like H equals the whole space. Okay. Mm, then there is a non-zero element of course so there exists Z but Z is in SL2 so we can expand this in terms of the basis element say P H C Y we can find A B C right because uh, H is non-zero we must show that H is H contains everything So let's divide cases. Case one, C is non-zero. Let's say C is non-zero. Then let's see what happens. Mm. Okay. Then let's compute this. Let's see what happens. So this is non-zero, and. Let's try to compute this. And this is x, and if you uh, have x bracket z, x x is going to be zero. And what what is x h? H x is two x, so x h will be minus of that, so minus two b plus now x x comma x bracket y. What is that? H. So it's two h. Oh, I think I forgot something x yes and because we are now taking x here this will be 0 so it's 2 times x h what is that uh, minus is it minus 4 4 x uh, something is missing right c so what is the final answer then? Okay. Minus two C. <laughs> I'm making uh, mistakes. If something is wrong, I think something is wrong. Is this gonna be C? Okay. The idea is you just take, try to uh, apply this kind of um, Lie bracket over and over. If this doesn't work, try something else. Basically, that's it. So, in the end, you will see that x is going to be there. So, in particular, this must be in H, right? Because z is in H. H is an idea. We assume that H is an idea. So, this must be in H. So, this the whole thing must be in H. So, we have x. We have x in H. So, x, c is non-zero. So this means x is in H. 
But once you have X in H, you can just kind of, uh, what, what else? You take the bracket with Y, then you will get H. Here you will get H. H is in H. And now H is in H, so H comma Y is going to be minus 2Y is in H. So we found everything. X is in H, Y, H is in H, Y is in H. So it's going to be the whole set the whole space. So H is SL2C. The other cases can be done similarly. Okay? You get the idea. So like I said, this will be a com very important example for us, SL2C. Um, definition. The commutator idea of G is this denoted G bracket G. And this means okay, that's with me. the space of linear combinations of commutators. So that means you consider all possible commutators. Commutator means x comma y for elements x, y, and g. But not just a single commut commutator, but you combine them like a un linear combination, and you consider all of them, and that this space will be the commutator. So, more more precisely, x one comma y one is a f set of element of this form. C is a m x m y m, where C i is in C or or R, depending on whether G is real or was complex real algebra. X, J, Y, J in uh, G. So you consider all possible combi linear combinations of commutators, and then you make a space like that, and that's going to be the commutator idea. Of course, yeah, we can show that this is indeed an idea. Just try to show that. So, proof, proposition. This is indeed an idea. Uh, proof. Uh, so simple, so you just check. You can check it uh, yeah, easily. In fact, now we will use this kind of kind of notation. So, if say A and B are like okay, maybe not A. If like a G one, G prime, let's say G prime, G prime, double prime. If these are sub algebras of G or just I think it can be it's okay. So let's say sub algebras, then this means we define this definition the same way like this. C one exactly the same thing like this except of course XJ is in the first set yj is in the second set, like that. And in this is, yeah. So this is the smallest idea that contains the commutator from, uh, c constructed from Commutator x comma y, where x is in the first set, y is in the second set. Okay.
Okay, now we are going to define, uh, in this way we can define like se sequence or chain of ideas. for a Lie algebra G uh, define say G0, G1, G2 in this way. We, this is defined recursively. First, G0 is going to be the whole set and what is GI? GI is GI minus 1, GI minus 1 for all I greater than equal to so G1 is G0, comma G, G0. And G2 is G1, comma, G1 bracket, G, G1, etc. And then this is, G1 is, whenever you take this, is the size is getting smaller and smaller. Like that, so chain, chain of subalgebra. This is called uh, derived series of G. This is just a definition. And we say that G is solvable if some of this eventually becomes zero. G J equals zero for some J. The economy is solvable. Uh, okay, here note that I just defined this, uh, but this is an ideal of ideal of G I minus one. If we define in this way, just like G commutator sub uh, commutator sub algebra is an ideal of that world. Did I say just commutator algebra and uh, commutator ideal? So just like G bracket G is an ideal of G, this is going to be an ideal of this because that's how it's defined. And uh, but. Uh, may GI may not be an ideal of of the whole uh, Lie, Lie algebra. Okay, there is something similar to this derived series. Okay, now. Um, now, is the script here are subscripts, but now they are superscripts. G2, these are defined by the fo as follows. So again, the first one, the zeroth one is the same. <coughs> but for I, instead of taking this commutator, GI minus one and the, with the same thing, we will have G and G I minus one. So it's slightly different. And again, G zero, G one, we go, like we have a chain like this. And this is called upper central series of G. And G is called, so here we have said solvable, and G is called nilpotent if eventually this series becomes zero. GJ equals zero for some J. The fact that th there's a relation between these two. Uh, 
something is more, something is stronger than the other. Okay, that will be. Okay. Let's see this proposition. Uh, GI is contains GI plus one. Oops, sorry. This and GI is contained in GI. Which one is easier? Yeah, let's see a proof of this just to yeah, understand the definition. So GI, what is the definition of GI? Super I. So first G0 is just, we have we can have any element there. But for G1, we have elements like this. For G1, we have elements like that. But for G3, we have elements like X3, say. We call it goes like that. So GI is generated by this, X1, X2, like that say x i minus 1 x i. Okay, so we are x 1 dot 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 x i are elements in G. This is just, this just follows from the definition. So this is a linear combination of these forms. That's what I mean by it's generated by these. And okay, uh, if Let's say, so for the first one, if x is in g, say, i plus 1, then x is a linear sum of this, like, like this, x2, da, 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 xi, xi plus 1. And actually, it's quite simple. We can just say, yeah, let's, let's denote this by x i tilde. Mm. Then this is going to be g i, because that's of this form. OK, we just collapse this to just one single element. And so this is, the first one is done, okay? It's quite simple by the definition. But for the second one, uh, gi is equal to gi minus one, gi minus one, like that. But this is a subset of, or subspace of g, gi minus one. Because this part is a sub, sub algebra of this. And this is the same thing, but uh, by the first part, or by, by induction, this is this, and this is this. This is uh, induction. This is obviously true for i equals 0, and then otherwise we can prove it like that. So in particular, um, say this super thing, this this subalgebra is bigger than this subalgebra. Okay. So what is the definition of a nilpotent or solvable? The solvable if g sub j equals zero for some j, but here nilpotent means g super j equals zero. But which one's bigger, this or this? Super is bigger. So if this part is zero, this must be zero too. So nilpotent implies a solvable solvability. So if, as a corollary, if G is nilpotent, then uh, 
g is solvable. But the converse is not true. Uh, the converse is not true. Um, not going to do that, but just give you an example. A, B, C, D, no, A, B, zero, C, A, B, C, like a complex number. So it's like upper triangle matrices. Think of this as a sub-algebra of GL2C. So the relief bracket is defined the usual way, x, x y minus y z, uh, x y minus y x. Then this is uh, solvable, but not nil potent. <coughs> you can you can prove it yourself, or if it's, or you can just read the textbook. So nilpotent is stronger. All right. Okay, then now we see some connection between Lie algebra and Lie Lie groups. The Lie algebra of a matrix Lie group. So let's say G is a matrix Lie group. But what's the definition of the of a matrix Lie group? So it's a subgroup, closed subgroup of GL, capital G L and C, the so general linear group. And whenever we have a matrix Lie group, we define a mat uh, corresponding Lie algebra. So the Lie algebra of the Lie algebra of G is, is again you denoted like cosec G. This is a set of all matrices such that uh, e to the t x is in G for all t real. This means whenever we have a matrix Lie group, we can make a corresponding Lie algebra. Definition is so a set of matrices. So here is, a, a, again, a set of matrices, but um, satisfying this condition. X, but e to the tx must be in G for all real number t. This is always real, no matter, even if we have C over here, just look at that. We don't have, we don't have to have uh, complex number T. Always T is going to be real. If that is satisfied, then it's an element in G, uh, the algebra of G. Uh, let's see a simple proposition. G matrix Lie group, and G is the Linear uh, is the Lie algebra of G. If x is in G, then e to the x is in G. G zero. Oh, no, not not this G. G zero. Where G zero is the identity component. Yeah, proof is immediate because let's say a t is the, this curve e to the t x, this path. Then what is a zero? E to the zero matrix, which is the identity. What is a of one? E to the x. And this a t, the 
curve entirely lies in G. Why? That's the definition of the algebra. Okay? A T is always G for all T. Because that's the definition. Okay? So we have found a curve path from I to E to the X. So it is gonna be in the identity component. Okay, I just this is just a terminology, but we don't really know just yet whether this is really a Lie algebra. I just define this as a set. This is a definition as a set. But of course, the fact is this is indeed a Lie algebra. That's the, what this theorem is saying. So G, I'm gonna use the notation. This means matrix Lie group corresponding Lie algebra. And let x, y be uh, elements in this matrix Lie uh, algebra. Then the first a x a inverse is in G for all a in G. Second s x is in G for all s uh, in the real realm. Three x plus y is in G. For x, y minus y, x in G. So this theorem, if you accept this theorem, then you will see immediately that this is a Lie algebra under this bracket definition, under this. If you define uh, bracket in this way, this tells us this this theorem tells us that the corresponding Lie algebra is really a Lie algebra. Uh, I guess the first two are very simple. You can just prove it. Um, I'll just mention the proof of three. Let's see wh why this is, is true. Mm, so, in order to show that x plus y is in G, what do we need to show? This means e to the t x plus y is in G for all t in the real number. We want to show this. Uh, and let's see. But we know that e to the x plus y cannot be separated e to the x times e to the y. That's not true in general. But we know this a nice theorem uh, called the Lie product formula, if you remember. Limit m approaches infinity e to the t x over m e to the t y over m over m. This is Lie's product formula. Yeah. Do you remember? We learned this early in this course. But this part is in G, right? Because X is in uh, this Lie algebra. This is also in G, okay? So their product must be in G, and their mth power must be in G, so everything here is in G. But then we take the limit, the limit must be in G. So, yeah, that's it. That's basically it. We know that this is invertible, so it, G is a matrix Lie group, and limit exists, and it's invertible, and it must be in G. That's the definition of matrix Lie group. So this is in G. So yeah, that's the proof. So for other, for the proof of four, uh, see the textbook. For uh, four. Okay, I think I should stop here. So, thank you for your attention. <laughs>